today. Are they on the top? No, they're like in the middle. What? What's up, dude? Hi. There's a leaf in my Perindale. Hi, and welcome to Fire Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably a subscriber, and I appreciate you. You're awesome. My subscribers are the awesome. I mean, I don't want to brag, but my subscribers are the awesomest. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey and I am currently documenting a breed study. A spinning breed study. This week is episode 8 and I will be spinning Massum. This is the Massum. It is gray. It feels fluffy. Not super soft, but I don't really mind that. And then this is Perindale. Also not super soft, but usually it's got a long staple and it feels kind of crisp like I like. So I love Perindale. I just don't know if I love Massim. I might love it. I just don't know yet. This is a little sneak preview. So next week, I think it'll be Thursday, there will be a little bonus video on making this binder from a dollar store binder. Let's see if we can get it to focus in. This came from the dollar store and now it's my breed study binder and I'm keeping all my sheets in here. I printed out two blanks. I've decided to put them in the middle. I don't know. The end would have made too much sense probably. These are my breed study worksheets and if you are interested in the worksheet that I'm using, I'll link to that on Pinterest. For my primary resource, I'm using the fleece and fiber source book. It's also linked in case you want it. It is a great book with tons of information on spinning and fleeces. I have also used the Spinner's Guide to Fleece as kind of a secondary resource. And if I can't find something on one of these breeds in either one, I've just been taking it to the internet. Let's look up Massum. I've learned a ton during this and how to print out some of these sheep names is one of the things that I've learned. So, so first we need to show the cute, adorable sheep. I love it when they have no hair on their heads. It's not no hair, it's just, you know, really short hair. They're a cross between a Teeswater Ram or sometimes a Wensleydale to a Dales bred or a Swaledale U. Apparently, uh, at least it says at least a hundred years in the hill country of Northern England, they've been producing this cross. They grow nice fleeces. It says long staples and good luster. So a Wensleydale and is like a long, is a long wall. Teeswater I think would be considered a long wall as well. I don't really know that much about Dale's, Dale's bread or Swaledale. The fiber characteristics vary. That happens when it's cross, a cross. I mean it happens in every breed but when it's a cross I think it's even a little more unpredictable because you really don't know what characteristics it's going to pick up from one and what characteristics it's going to pick up from the other. So you, it's more of a crapshoot. Just like if you were to crossbreed dogs, you, you really don't know what you're going to get. And if you crossbreed them a second time, it's like kind of chaos. <laughs> There's no Massums, it says here, in a, on my side of the Atlantic. Now here it says you don't find Dale's bred Swaledale or Ruffell breeds, which are sometimes the ones that are the U's, and that's why you don't find them on this side. That's all the info that the Fleece and Fiber source book has about this. That does make sense because how can you give like an average fleece weight or an average um, micron count if there's a hugely wide variation in what comes from that cross. They do have a picture of kind of like what the, the locks look like and I think that's worth showing since I don't have more info. These are very white. Mine has some color to it and that does make sense because Wensleydales are often pretty close to this color. It has a really nice luster like they talked about. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. But yep, when I do that, you can see, if you watch right here, there is a nice shine to that. See that? So I'm looking forward to this. Let's see how long the staple is. I've got my trusty bendy ruler. 
it feels kind of like Wensleydale, I have to say. Ooh, all right. Now you're talking. Got a pretty good lock here. So this is about six inches. It's right on six inches. Wensleydale is something that I would almost exclusively use for lace, but I will say this doesn't feel quite as coarse as the last Wensleydale I had, but again, variation. I've said it a million times. Variation is a familiar refrain we've all heard, right? So let's go spin it. Spinning's all done, hi. It's actually Tuesday morning and I'm sorry about the boxes over here. This room is actually a complete crazy pants mess. I haven't told you guys we're doing some home renovations. <laughs> and we also have been doing yard cleanup and it is just like literally chaos in my whole house. I don't know, it's fine, it'll be okay. I finished spinning the Massum. One of you in the la at the end of the last breed study commented that you had spun some and that you did not like it, didn't make friends with it. I don't know exactly what your wording was. I did spin it short forward draw, but I kept it very low twist and I let it be a little bulkier. And this is what it looks like. So this is how it turned out. And I think keeping it low twist was definitely the right choice. It's got some squish to it. Um, way more than I thought I was gonna have but I can see how this would get ropey really quickly if you put more twist in it and also I would like to try it again for lace sometime I'm not spinning lace at all in the breed study but I have been making note of ones that I would like to try for lace later or that I have spun lace with before and I, this is one I'd like to try I really actually like it I like it way more than I thought I would um, I personally think this would make a fine outer like garment just not next to skin but it's really not bad next to skin either honestly I, I liked it I would spin it again I probably will spin it again and I had 30 yards I did spin it pretty thick compared to a lot of the other ones so I love it who knew Perindale is a relatively new breed of sheep, says the 50s. It was developed as a dual, as a meat and fiber, like hopefully we get both kind of thing. Again, familiar refrain, it happens over and over. Shepherds are always like, we can do this, we can make this happen. Hundreds of years ago, 70 years ago, same thing. It says here, um, it was in New Zealand and, oh, it was Chevy Rams on Romney U's. So I love a Romney fleece. This is probably why I love this. And then it says they're still kind of rare in North America. They're long wool. It's very bounce it says it's very bouncy. It will spring up spin up with a lot of spring in it. I love it. Lofty quality, nice for sweaters in the finer ranges. Again, just like all of these, it says that there is a range of fineness what you would use it for just kind of depends on the characteristics of your particular fleece again that's just kind of the way all of this is but it's good to say fleece weight seven and a half to eleven pounds so it's a good size fleece it's a bigger fleece romneys are bigger sheep staple length four to six inches so that's a pretty good size staple length um i have seen longer so that kind of surprises me it says 28 to 35 
microns and the New Zealand ones are try to hit 30 to 37. That's what it says in here. Generally white, although there are also colored flocks. So it says for the long staples, it is nice to spin from the lock. I have done that. I do like that with a longer staple, but everybody's different. You do you, it's cool. Easy and pleasant to spin. That's probably why I like it, easy. That's my speed. But there is no picture of the sheep in here. I'm gonna Google you a picture of the sheep, hang out. They look like they really produce a big, big fleece, don't they? They're even like their chest is like really fluffy. Let's check the staple length on this and then we're gonna go spin it. I love how this feels. I love the Airedale so much. The fact that it's a cross between Chivia and Romney really makes sense to me. It is about five inches. This is a five inch staple. It's gonna take color really nicely and it's pretty, it feels pretty fine comparatively. Let's go spin it. The Perindale. I've talked about this already. This is one I absolutely love to spin. I've spun it before. For me, it has a really good balance between like a long wool and something with more crimp or maybe even a fine wool. It's kind of a, a really nice balance. Not as soft as a fine wool. I mean, it's not gonna be, right? But lovely i got 50 yards i tried hard to spin it a little bit thinner and when i say a little bit thinner i tried really hard to spin it thinner than i did the mass um and it, it was easy to spin thin i could have gone much thinner it's got just a little more spring you can see i did expect that because the crimp is usually a little bit tighter and it is very squish it's almost a little bit silky i bet it's going to dye up just beautifully it also has just a little bit of that pearly sheen that i like so much so i'm really happy with this definitely put a bump in my cart already not ready to place an order yet but when i do some of this is coming to the shop. So I love you guys for hanging in with me so far. I honestly thought people would drop off and drop off and drop off. Um, it really hasn't gone that way. Next week, we will be spinning Polworth, which I love. It is a very, very fluffy, pretty fine fiber for next week. Actually, that's gonna be the theme next week because we will also be spinning Rambouillet. And I actually have bumps of both of these for dyeing for my shop. So we know that I already really like them and look forward to spinning them. Next week's gonna be some fine fibers. The, the battle of the fine fibers next week. See you there. I'm happy to have you guys along with me on this breed study. Thanks, I love you, bye.